Isaiah chapter 21 A prophecy against the desert by the sea Like whirlwinds sweeping through the southland, an invader comes from the desert, from a land of terror. A dire vision has been shown to me. The traitor betrays, the looter takes loot. Elam, attack. Media, lay siege. I will bring to an end all the groaning she caused. At this my body is racked with pain. Pangs seize me like those of a woman in labour. I am staggered by what I hear. I am bewildered by what I see. My heart falters. Fear makes me tremble. The twilight I longed for has become a horror to me. They set the tables. They spread the rugs. They eat. They drink. Get up, you officers. Oil the shields. This is what the Lord says to me. Go, post a lookout, and let him report what he sees. When he sees chariots with teams of horses, riders on donkeys or riders on camels, let him be alert, fully alert. And the lookout shouted, Day after day, my Lord, I stand on the watchtower. Every night I stay at my post. Look, here comes a man in a chariot with a team of horses. And he gives back the answer, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. All the images of its gods lie shattered on the ground. My people who are crushed on the threshing floor, I tell you what I have heard from the Lord Almighty, from the God of Israel. A Prophecy Against Duma Someone calls to me from Seir. Watchman, what is left of the night? Watchman, what is left of the night? The watchman replies, Morning is coming, but also the night. If you would ask, then ask, and come back yet again. A Prophecy Against Arabia You caravans of Dedanites who camp in the thickets of Arabia, bring water for the thirsty. You who live in Tima, bring food for the fugitives. They flee from the sword, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and from the heat of battle. This is what the Lord says to me, Within one year, as a servant bound by contract would count it, all the splendor of Kedar will come to an end. The survivors of the archers, the warriors of Kedar, will be few. The Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Isaiah chapter 22 A Prophecy Against the Valley of Vision What troubles you now? That you have all gone up on the roofs. You town so full of commotion, you city of tumult and revelry. Your Spain were not killed by the sword, nor did they die in battle. All your leaders have fled together. They have been captured without using the bow. All you who are caught were taken prisoner together, having fled while the enemy was still far away. Therefore I said, Turn away from me, let me weep bitterly. Do not try to console me over the destruction of my people. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, has a day of tumult and trampling and terror in the valley of vision, a day of battering down walls and of crying out to the mountains. Elam takes up the quiver with her charioteers and horses. Kerr uncovers the shield. Your choicest valleys are full of chariots and horsemen are posted at the city gates. The Lord stripped away the defences of Judah, and you looked in that day to the weapons in the palace of the forest. You saw that the walls of the city of David were broken through in many places. You stored up water in the lower pool. You counted the buildings in Jerusalem and tore down houses to strengthen the wall. You built a reservoir between the two walls for the water of the old pool, but you did not look to the one who made it or have regard for the one who planned it long ago. The Lord, the Lord Almighty, called you on that day to weep and to wail, to tear out your hair and put on sackcloth. But see, there is joy and revelry, slaughtering of cattle and killing of sheep, eating of meat and drinking of wine. 
Let us eat and drink, you say, for tomorrow we die. The Lord Almighty has revealed this in my hearing. Till your dying day, this sin will not be atoned for, says the Lord, the Lord Almighty. This is what the Lord, the Lord Almighty, says. Go, say to this steward, to Shebna, the palace administrator, What are you doing here? And who gave you permission to cut out a grave for yourself here, hewing your grave on the height and chiseling your resting place in the rock? Beware. The Lord is about to take firm hold of you and hurl you away, you mighty man. He will roll you up tightly like a ball and throw you into a large country. There you will die, and there the chariots you were so proud of will become a disgrace to your master's house. I will depose you from your office, and you will be ousted from your position. In that day, I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe, and fasten your sash around him, and hand your authority over to him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the people of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I will drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a seat of honor for the house of his father. All the glory of his family will hang on him, its offspring and offshoots, all its lesser vessels, from the bowls to all the jars. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, the peg driven into the firm place, will give way. It will be sheared off and will fall, and the load hanging on it will be cut down. The Lord has spoken. Isaiah chapter 23 A prophecy against Tyre Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for Tyre is destroyed and left without house or harbour. From the land of Cyprus word has come to them. Be silent, you people of the island, and you merchants of Sidon, whom the seafarers have enriched. On the great waters came the grain of the Shihor. The harvest of the Nile was the revenue of Tyre, and she became the marketplace of the nations. Be ashamed, Sidon, and you fortress of the sea, for the sea has spoken. I have neither been in labor nor given birth. I have neither reared sons nor brought up daughters. When word comes to Egypt, they will be in anguish at the report from Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish. Wail, you people of the island. Is this your city of revelry, the old, old city? whose feet have taken her to settle in far-off lands. Who planned this against Tyre, the bestower of crowns, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are renowned in the earth? The Lord Almighty planned it, to bring down her pride in all her splendor, and to humble all who are renowned on the earth. Till your land, as they do along the Nile, daughter Tarshish, for you no longer have a harbor. The Lord has stretched out his hand over the sea and made its kingdoms tremble. He has given an order concerning Phoenicia that her fortresses be destroyed. He said, No more of your reveling, virgin daughter Sidon, now crushed. Up, cross over to Cyprus. Even there you will find no rest. Look at the land of the Babylonians, this people that is now of no account. The Assyrians have made it a place for desert creatures. They raised up their siege towers, they stripped its fortresses bare, and turned it into a ruin. Wail, you ships of Tarshish! Your fortress is destroyed. At that time Tyre will be forgotten for seventy years, the span of a king's life. But at the end of these seventy years, it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the prostitute. Take up a harp, walk through the city, you forgotten prostitute. Play the harp well, sing many a song, so that you will be remembered. At the end of seventy years, 
the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her lucrative prostitution and will ply her trade with all the kingdoms on the face of the earth. Yet her profit and her earnings will be set apart for the Lord. They will not be stored up or hoarded. Her profits will go to those who live before the Lord for abundant food and fine clothes. Psalm 67 May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face shine on us, so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Proverbs chapter 16 To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this, they will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, He causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The lips of a king speaks as an oracle, and his mouth does not betray justice. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights in the bag are of his making. Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. Kings take pleasure in honest lips. They value the one who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. The wise in heart are called discerning and gracious words promote instruction. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of laborers works for them. Their hunger drives them on. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. A violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever purses their lips is bent on evil. Grey hair is a crown of splendor, 
it is attained in the way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord.